Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Fairy Talk. This is not a build video. This is more of a recap of what's, you know, the projects I've been working on, different goings on in the shop, things of that nature. Uh, a lot of common questions. I like to see if I can answer those and, and different things. If you guys caught the uh, DIY, I guess you'd call it Baltic Birch Top Desk. So it was a simple desk. The, the legs were purchased online. And I had quite a few people asking about its stability as far as racking from side to side. And it is actually very stout. Uh, the only thing I, you know, th those brackets were actually kind of uh, thicker metal. They bolted up real nice. And there was really no issue with it racking either from side to side or even front to back. I would, however, that's about as shallow as I would go for that type of desk. That is, I, I believe it was 18 inches. Uh, I'll have all the links to everything down in the description below. And uh, the, the website article had the exact measurements. But I wouldn't go any narrower than those, those legs front to back might be a bit close together. So that's about the only thing that I would warn on that. But that's a really cool project that you essentially can make the top any size that you want. That could be essentially even a, a dining table, uh, like a sideboard. Uh, you could possibly even squeeze that into a small enough side to be an end table but it's a bit tall for your most traditional end tables so that was that was a really cool project i got i got more of featuring baltic birch and the the laminations the veneers uh to come in the future because I, I really really do like that look and then the the next project that the most recent one that i had was the storage organizer for my outfeed table slash assembly table slash workbench slash horizontal surface junk collector. <laughs> uh, that one was really cool. I actually had a video making that uh, shoebox container organizer that I did on my channel a while back and uh, I'll leave a link as well to that one. And it, those bins are really cheap. If you can find them local to you, they're typically under a dollar and if you find them on sale like less than 90 cents. So they're a real cheap alternative to having to be laborious and making a bunch of bins and things of that nature. And they can hold some of the bigger stuff that maybe, you know, your smaller containers can't. And that was a collaboration with Jay Bates and April Wilkerson. They're actually the ones that made that assembly table for me. And that was just a really cool uh, experience having them in the shop. Uh, and that was just, uh, I already filled most of the bins. I think I have two bins left. So that just shows, you know, you go to add storage and, you, you know, you notice things that are, well, collecting on other tools that, that could be put away, that, that deserve a home. Because you can't really clean efficiently and well unless your things have a home. So, hashtag tool home. <laughs> Moving into a new tool in the shop, I actually got a lathe not too long ago. Well, I guess it's been probably close to two months already. But I've been getting a ton of use out of that thing and just enjoying that. Every, you know, every chance I get, I'm basically turning stuff, whether it's pens or bowls or... So hopefully more turning videos to come. I realize that lathe turning is not for everybody, but uh, hopefully I can be able to integrate that. I've been saving for that, that machine for a long time, and it's really coming to pay off. And I, I wanted to give a special shout out to Tommy G. He actually made and sent these lathe tools to me, and I, I kind of had a special request when he was, he was offering to make some. I wanted uh, a silver ferrule and then like a black handle and I believe this is oak it's either oak or hickory um, it, it just is awesome and so thank you he's actually sent me you know the round the square and then the diamond shaped carbide three separate tools he's got a YouTube channel make sure to put a link in the description below and uh, he's he's making these for sale too so if you want to check that out definitely uh, take a peek at that so thank you so much Tommy G and if you guys don't follow me on Instagram take a look at this picture this is this is interesting. I, I can't tell you too much about the picture at first, and I'll and I'll show the picture, I guess, right side up or upside down, and then I'll flip it, and then you can kind of. Do you see a convex or concave on the edge of the plywood? I didn't think about it because I was the one that was there and knew what the piece of plywood was. But as somebody explained it to me on my Instagram. I realized it, that it was an illusion. It, you can uh, look at it, I guess, both ways. And once you see it both ways, my mind can't flip between them or can't stop from flipping between them. And I thought that was really interesting. So definitely check me out on Instagram. I'm always kind of posting different things around there. And in fact, one thing that I posted over there was uh, this picture. And I, I was going to try and describe it. Other than I have to just show this picture. 
this was uh, a kind of a running joke. I, I, I do a podcast, if you're not familiar, uh, it's called The Woodworking Podcast. You can go uh, find all the information on it called thewoodworkingpodcast.com for all the information. And I run that with April Wilkerson and Jay Bates. And one night I was, well, during one of the podcasts, I was talking about how my water heater broke and it just kind of finally crapped out and I was thinking about replacing it and just kind of, you know, I mean, not thinking about it, but I was trying to get enough time for me to replace it. So I was in the midst of replacing it, essentially, and uh, it just so happened I was playing with some dry ice uh, with my kids because I, I like to kind of make science fun for them, and that's just one of those things to where, you know, dry ice is just kind of fun, you know, obviously with adult supervision. But I was talking with Jay Bates one night, and he goes, hey, stick some in the toilet, and then you know, just kind of hashtag it like my water heater I installed backwards and everybody got a kick out of that. That was pretty funny, but no, that was just dry ice. But that, 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 so anyways, if you're, if you're interested in that, uh, I'll leave the link to my Instagram down below. The, the, the kind of the moral there is, well, pranks are funny. Um, but also, uh, you know, kids, you got to make science and mathematics fun. And that was just one of the many things that I like to do with my kids to where it's, so it's enjoyable so that they get excited and I'm, I'm hoping that they grow up with the appreciation for building and making things and seeing how things perform. My, my oldest is seven years old and through just doing that, and he's a very inquisitive kid, but just through doing that, I was able to teach him about the different uh, states of, of, of solid liquid and vapor and, and what sublimation is because that's essentially what dry ice does is it goes from a solid all the way to a gas and it passes completely past the liquid state which is sublimation and so for a seven-year-old to know what sublimation is and be enthusiastic about it because he got to see it firsthand I don't know I, I, I think that's pretty cool and then I also got I mean just another example uh, my kid a little uh, rock kit where he, he breaks it apart with a little you know like a geologist you know hammer it's just a, a little wood mallet but and gets to discover different gems and minerals and so it just makes that more exciting for them, which is really cool. So that's kind of the takeaway. If you can, if you can make it fun for them, definitely do that. Lastly, and certainly not least, I had the pleasure to go to WIA this year in Cincinnati, technically Covington, Kentucky, right across the river from Cincinnati, Ohio, and a lot of people there, and that was just an absolute blast. I, I just love that, just that many people sharing a common interest and being able to talk shop and get to meet all the vendors and all that stuff. And I, I actually didn't spend too much money this time, but it was cool. I got to meet up with Charlie Kasorik. Hey, how you doing? And Charlie has a YouTube channel uh, as well. I'll leave a link in the description. And part of the, one of the series he does on his YouTube channel is he interviews different people that create content online. And he was driving back from Cincinnati and figured you'd stop by. That's right. Why not? And uh, it's been a great time. We've you know really had a good day here. Yeah. It's... Yeah, hanging out, went to lunch. Shooting the breeze, you know. <laughs> a, a lot of funny, uh, hopefully you include some bloopers on your video as well. Well, it'd be hard to cut them all out. <laughs> <laughs> so he's here today, and when are you hoping the video is going to be out there? Do you, you don't have a time frame? Uh, it'll probably be five, six weeks, re realistically, because I, I don't, I don't want to do an uh, interview video every single week. I have build videos and tips and things like that, so I try to mix them up. And he's got, the name of his channel is Jack Bench, and... It's because he's got a really cool adjustable height workbench. I won't say any more because you'll have to check it out. Link in the description below. Cool. And, yeah, uh, check it out. Yeah. Um, that's about all I have for, uh, for right now. Until I see you guys next time in the next build video, I'll see you later. All right. Thanks. Bye. Uh, lastly, and certainly, definitely, certainly, definitely, superfluously, expeditiously, mentally, physically, super fragilistically. <laughs> that'll be a blooper. Yeah. Yeah, that'll yeah, be a blooper. Yeah, you think? Yeah. Okay. <laughs>